Good morning, church, and welcome. We're so glad you could join us online for this Sunday morning service. Why not use our new chat function to let us know who you are and where you're watching from? We also have a prayer request function and have a team stood by ready to pray for you. We hope you have an amazing Sunday, and I pray that this service blesses you. Welcome to our worship this morning. Wherever you are and whatever your circumstances, I pray that this will be a special time of blessing and peace. We shall start with a hymn. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation.
now to our first prayer, our prayer of adoration. Let us pray. God, our Father, we worship and adore your holy name. You are all majesty and all might. You are great and alone in power and strength. You have cared for us all the days of our lives, and you sent your son Jesus, an example to us all as to how we should live. When we let you down, you go on loving us. Touch our lips, Father. May we ever speak your name with praise and honour you with our words. May holy, holy, holy be our praise to glorify your name. Loving God. Amen. Now, a short moment for reflection before we pray a prayer of confession. God, our Father, we confess before you our ingratitude and wickedness. When we should have been thankful, we have forgotten you. When we should have offered ourselves in your service, we have thought only of our own concerns. Help us, O oh Lord, to change our attitudes as you would guide us. And renew us, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. I have a reading today from the Old Testament, and it records the call of Isaiah. And so, reading from chapter 6 of Isaiah and verses 1 to 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. And so we praise God for that wonderful reading from his holy word. And we're going to sing the hymn appropriate to the reading now. It is holy, 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 Lord God almighty, early in the morning, our song shall rise to thee.
often read the passage which we heard from Isaiah, as I'm sure many of you have. It is, of course, sometimes known as the call of Isaiah, and is very dramatic and conjures up a wonderful picture. The year was 739 BC, and for Judah it was the year King Uzziah died. For Isaiah, it was momentous for a completely different reason. Not life drawing to a close, but life taking on a new and challenging perspective. What had happened that made it so memorable for him? It was the year that he saw the Lord. And these two events, the death of Isaiah and the encounter with God that Isaiah experienced, were turning points. For Judah, Uzziah's death marked the end of peace and prosperity. Fighting broke out all around, involving Israel, Syria, and Assyria. Worst of all, there was a deepening spiritual decline. Uzziah had begun as a godly king, as it says in 2 Chronicles, as long as he sought the Lord, God gave him success. But growing military success made him proud. And he turned away from God, but he was also struck down with leprosy. Uzziah's death was, in effect, symbolic. He had begun well and enjoyed prosperity as long as he remained obedient to God. Once he began to grow away from God, disease struck. And although on the surface all seemed well, the disease was having its effect. And Isaiah pointed out that the country and its people were diseased, just like their king, because they had deserted the Lord. Yet, this was the year when Isaiah saw the Lord. Perhaps he had gone to the temple to pray 
or offer sacrifices? We don't know because it doesn't say. All we know is that he did go and had the most wonderful experience. And then a very painful thing happened, which must have left him more than a little shock. It happened like this. Suddenly, the veils were stripped away and Isaiah saw, as it says, the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted. And he goes on to describe the angels and the sense that the foundations shook and smoke fills the temple. And also the brilliance that was God blazing out as the angels cried out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Isaiah was overcome with dread as he was confronted by what must have been an awesome sight. And he realized that God was indeed holy. Almost at the same time, he realizes that this fact was something that the people had ignored. And even more, he wasn't any different from the rest. What the glorious vision revealed was his own condition. Perhaps this has something to say to us when we think that we are better than others. But when we compare ourselves with Jesus, or as Isaiah did, when seeing the glorious light radiating from God, then it is a different story, isn't it? Isaiah suddenly saw his whole lifestyle as leaving much to be desired. His famous words recorded as, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips and live among a people of unclean lips. But almost at the same time, he also realizes that he has witnessed something very, very special. For he adds, yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. He's trying to make sense of it as well. Why should he be privileged to witness this wonderful thing? And God has an answer. In reality, this is one of the most dramatic of commissioning ceremonies. For it's at this point that a seraph flies to him bearing a burning coal in tongues. And then, ouch, he touches Isaiah's lips. Can you imagine what this must have felt like? The pain must have been excruciating. If ever you've caught your hand or finger on a red hot iron or you, your arm on the shelf of the oven as you've taken something out of it, you will have an idea of the pain of a burn. And this was on the lips, which are extremely sensitive. What was the reason behind this action? Well, for one thing, Isaiah would never, never forget it, would he? Even when the scabs fell off and the wound healed. Confession and repentance are painful. And God touched the part of Isaiah's body that he would be using to represent him. Namely, of course, his mouth, where the words would come from. It would probably be weeks, perhaps months, before Isaiah could speak without pain. But God's mission of recruitment was complete. Because in the next breath almost, when the question is asked, those famous words, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And comes back the equally famous reply, here am I send me. And so Isaiah begins his task. He did not mince words as he told the people that their behavior would result in their destruction. They would go through great trials, hardship and exile, but eventually they would be redeemed. He also told of the Messiah who would eventually come. Isaiah carried out his task faithfully. His book is full of beautiful poetry and also words that at times are sometimes harsh until eventually he is given a new task 
and the words at the beginning of chapter 40 set a new tone. Comfort, oh comfort my people. There are 66 chapters in the book of Isaiah, and there are disputes as to whether they were written by more than one person. In many ways, that does not matter. The fact remains that a man called Isaiah was called by God to initiate what amounted to a campaign to bring the people back into line. They would go through many traumas. They would be threatened, cajoled and brought low. And then they would be offered comfort and finally salvation. It's quite a long journey that we take when reading through Isaiah and lots of memorable and inspirational words as well, including, surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. God does still call people to service, maybe not in such a dramatic and painful way, but I pray that if he calls you, you will be ready, like Isaiah, to say those wonderful words. Here am I send me. Thanks be to God. Amen. We sing our next hymn now and it is Standing on the Promises of God. Standing on the promises of Christ my King that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail by the living word of god i shall prevail standing on the promises of god I now can see perfect present cleansing in the blood for me standing in the liberty where Christ makes free standing on the promises of God standing 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 on the promises of God my Savior standing standing I'm standing of Christ the Lord, bound to him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily with the spirit sword, standing on the promises of God.
We come now to our prayers of intercession. And after the words, Lord, in your mercy, the response is, hear our prayer, if you'd like to join in. Let us pray. Father, we pray the people who we do not know, but ask your blessing on anyone who is experiencing sadness, unsurmountable problems, and who are in distress. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those fleeing from injustice and danger, that they may find sanctuary. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the affairs of the world, for the decisions that are made, that affect everyone, that those decisions may be just and fair. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the church, of which we are a part, and for all Christian work and witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all whom we love, and for each person joining in this time of worship, wherever they are, asking your blessing upon them, and especially upon anyone who is in special need. Lord, hear our prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so we come to our closing song, and it is, Let Everything That Has Breath.
count it a great privilege to be able to leave worship in this way. And I pray that you have enjoyed worshipping with me as well. And now, a blessing. May God's peace and love surround you as you go about your daily tasks. And may the grace of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you today and always. Amen.